All right, one last look at the disclaimer, and we're going to look at the SPY straddle, correct? Yep. All right, perfect. So got that. You Let need me to share your screen, screen yeah. again. All right, so the the question was on a straddle, a long straddle. So I'm going to use SPY, for example, and we're just going to go and set up a straddle and as a, the, the option strategy, and then we're going to and analyze that straddle. So right now, I'm on SPY options chain. So you can see here, if you scroll down, you have all these different expirations to the left. Let me expand the screen. These are the different expirations available uh, with options in SPY. Um, then when you click on one of these expirations, let's just do one here. I'll do July 24th, let's say. When you click on the one of the expirations on the left-hand side, it's going to load the options chain for that particular expiration. So see, I just clicked on July 24th, and now I got the July 24th expiration. You can see here five calendar, three three trading days left, five calendar days. And these are the calls on the left-hand side, puts on the right-hand side with prices and statistics. So when we talk about a straddle, the straddle is an option strategy. The long straddle is an option strategy that you're buying a call option and a put option that is at the money. At the money is basically trying to say, where is the spot price of the stock? And then looking for the strike price that matches that and buying the straddle. So here we can't find an exactly 548.99, uh, but with the closest one, which is pretty close is the 549 strike. And the idea there is that the straddle, long straddle, is an outlook that the stock itself is going to move away from the 549 strike by a big enough percentage or big enough amount that it will exceed the cost of both the call and the put. Okay, so we're doing a long straddle. We're saying it's that the move is going to be over the cost of that straddle. Think of it as an over under. Okay, let's set it up. So 549 strike to first, let's do the call side. So I'm going to click on the ask. And when I do that, you see the 549 call over here. The bid is 315 in the call. The ask is 317. So if we're coming in from the, the buy side, we're going to click on the ask. And then you see the first leg of this straddle. Buy the July 24, 549 call, $3.17. So we're going to leave that price. We're just going to let it populate where the current market is. Then we have to by the put to complete that straddle strategy. So now I'm on the 549 strike. I go over 309 bid in the put, 311 ask. We're going to click on that ask, 311. When you do that, here comes the next leg of the strategy, buying the July 24th, 549 put for 311. We're going to leave these prices, everything as is, and then we want to analyze it. So... I'm going to run this analysis and we're going to get a bunch of statistics and analytics on this strategy. Okay. So first, let, let me leave this part up top. We're going to come back to it. First, let's just look what the strategy looks like. So here's the payout diagram. Okay. And you could see that 549 right here, that's where the strike is. That's where currently this the spot price is, or um, the spot price is five forty eight seventy two when we took the snapshot, right thirty seconds before the close. So the worst case scenario you could see here is that if the stock at expiration, this is at expiration, closes at five forty nine. 
Well, that's not a good spot for you because what happens is that the call and the put will expire worthless. They're 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 not worth anything. But since you bought both of them, you it was a net debit, and here you paid six dollars and twenty eight cents. Right, you bought one of these, the calls, then one of one put total six dollars twenty eight cents. Well, if they're worthless, you lost six dollars twenty eight cents. So obviously, that's that's not a good scenario for you. And you need the stock to move in either direction. You could see here that if the stock moves down, well, what will happen is at expiration, if, if the stock's below 549, the, the call will be worthless. But the put itself will be in the money and its value will depend on how far below the stock finishes. Well, how far below do you need it? Well, you need it to cover the cost of both call and put, right? Just to break even. So you could see here, these are your two break evens. To the downside, 542.72. To the upside, it's 558.28. So you have two break evens, right? The stock could go up or down. And what does that mean in percentage terms? Well, it's one down 1.1%. From, from here, keep in mind that this is, when we took the snapshot, the stock was already below 548.72. So down 1.1% to break even or up 1.2% to break even. So if it goes down more than that, it becomes profitable. See on the green side, if it goes up more than this 1.2%, then it becomes profitable at expiration. So here we go. We're we're risking six dollars twenty eight cents. Our max loss in the stock. It's, if the if the stock is at five forty nine, uh, so distance to max loss. You know we're almost right there. And how much premium over parity are we paying? One point one percent. Right. So that's essentially a long. If we take that long straddle strategy from here we we really have to believe that the stock's going to move more than 1.1 percent in in the next three how let's come up here next three trading days All right so we have three trading days for this to happen um so now that we know this let's look up statistically you know how often this happens so in for in history right is this three days you how frequently does it happen on average how much does it go up that's what we want to kind of now start comparing um for reference because you know there's so many different strategies we need some kind of like reference points just to see you know is this even in the ballpark and when we say like, you know, over and under, think of it this way, you're betting on the way it would work. Is like if you're betting on a on a game, let's say two teams are playing and you think the score is going to be over or under. Let's say you think I think it's going to be over 20 points between both teams and somebody else thinks it's going to be under. Right. So if I think it's over and this and the and it ends up being like 23. Well, then then it's like I would win three extra bucks, right? And if it goes 17, then I would lose. Or if it goes to 10, I would lose 10. So that's kind of like the over-under approach. So we think it's going over 1.1%. So let's just take a look. If we averaged historically, if we took three-day three -day periods, historically and said you know sometimes it moved two percent sometimes it moved one percent sometimes zero percent if we averaged all of those out you know and, and converted the percentage moves now to dollar value what would it average out well this in theory the average value of the straddle six dollars 33 cents 
which implies, okay, a slight edge, that average is above the current price, $6.28. So then the question would be, okay, well, how often did it move in, in three days, at the end of three days, how often did the SPY move by more than the required percentage to be profitable, right? So the required percentage right here is, you know, up more than 1.2%. Did Or down, yep. Sorry, Soham had a question about, uh, could you explain what you mean by premium over parity? About what? Premium over parity. I, yeah. I guess you maybe mentioned it somewhere and he, we, we had this delay between the two. I apologize about that. Right. Yeah. So, so the premium over parity refers to how much uh, option time value or premium is there above the options parity value. Okay, so because you could hedge off the part that is parity. So let's just come up here. And you could see here that sometimes <coughs> the option itself is in the money, right? It doesn't have to be out of the money. It doesn't have to be a strike that's, that's far away for the stock to have to go up to reach it. Sometimes the the stock is already above the strike in terms of a call or below the strike in terms of a put. So when an option has parity, right, what is the parity? Well, if the, let's say this five, here's a call, 500, 540 strike call. Well, if the stock is $548.72, right? and the strike is 540, well, that option has to be worth at least $8.72, or you'll create an arbitrage because that's parity. Meaning that if I could buy an option below $8.72, so if I buy, let's say I bought this 540 call for six bucks, right? So, I, so now I have the right to buy the stock for $540 and I paid $6 for that option. Well, if I exercise, it's like paying $546 for the stock, right? I paid $6 for the option, $540 for the stock. My total cost is 546. But if I could go turn around and sell the stock for 548.72, well, that's an arbitrage because I bought something for 546 that I could immediately sell for $548.72. So parity, right? Parity of the option is, in this case, $8.72. I would be willing at least to pay that much because if I if I could buy anything below, well, it's an arbitrage, right? I could buy it and then sell it and, and, and make the difference. So there is, and, and obviously that would, that would be like a mispricing somewhere. So options, you know, will usually, they could trade maybe at parity or there's some kind of a premium over parity, right? So the premium is the difference between the parity. So in this case, 540, it would be at least $8.72, but the option is nine $9.72. So let's just say it's a dollar premium, right? There's a premium over parity. There's an extra dollar that you're paying for that option. And then we just convert that dollar into, well, what is what does that mean in percentage terms as relative to the stock? Okay. So what does a dollar mean? I'm paying a dollar extra because it's at least worth it $8.72. If I'm paying a dollar extra, well, how much in percentage terms am I, am I paying for that option? Okay, so this premium over parity, premium over parity, it's taking the call plus the put, right, which is $6.28, 
Now, it's it's looking well, how much premium is in there. So there's it's probably you know in this situation it's already looks like twenty eight cents of it is in the money. So you take six dollars divided by the the stock by forty nine, and that's how much premium over parity you pay. Okay, that that and that's basically in this in the straddle. You know that's how much you need you need the stock to move. Does that help? Put that in. Let me know if there was a follow. That was helpful. Okay. So let's come back up here to look at our stats here. And we know now from this payout diagram that the stock has to make a movement. Well, either two ways, right? It, it either has to go above 1.2% or it has to go down by more than 1.1% for this straddle to be profitable at expiration, right? Because that's what we figured out here. Well, okay, how often did that happen in, historically? You know, did it never happen? Did it? Does it happen very frequently? Like, what are the historical statistics say about that type of stock volatility or movement? You know, is it rare? Is it frequent? So that's what we're doing. We're going to go back in history and say, all right, give me, give me a three day, three day return. You know, going back several years. So I think right now I have it. I think I might have it set to. We'll go look. I think I have it set to uh, four years of data. And tell me, how often did this did this happen? A th that that this this straddle would have been a winner. Okay, that's what we're looking at. How often historically would this straddle have been a winner given those given those parameters? Well, this says forty percent of the time. Okay, so 40% of the time, the stock after three days had a return greater than 1.2% or the stock had a return that was the, that exceeded a negative 1.1%, which would have resulted in the straddle being profitable. Okay, which keep in mind, this 40% doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean that the strategy was unprofitable over the long term because a straddle it could have been worth a lot more, right? Than 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 what you paid for, it, right? Like you paid six dollars, but the winners could have been nine, ten, eighteen dollars. Okay, so the, so keep keep that in mind that the the payoffs are not the, the payoffs themselves vary. Okay. And that's why we see this that the average value is 633. Okay, the payoffs themselves vary. Think of a if you're playing a wheel from one to ten, and if it lands one to nine, you lose a dollar. But if it lands on ten, you win a million dollars. Obviously, the ten is the better bet because the payoffs vary. So now we see that 40% of the time, this would have resulted historically as a winner so it's not like it never happens you know maybe maybe it happens less than 50% of the time but it but it still happens uh you know 4 out of 10 but in the straddle situation we also maybe one knows that okay a stock itself can move around in between so even if we start out today and at the end of 3 days you know it's up 1% but there's volatility in between. So never, it doesn't mean that in three days is going to end up at the highest point or lowest point. That it could have gone up 2% sometimes and then just ended up at the end of three days only up 1%, right? Or it could be down 2% like day two and day three come back up 1%. So this is where the probability of touch comes in. Well, how often the stock move enough 
to exceed these parameters. 1.1% down, 1.2%. How often did it move enough at any point in between those three days to make this uh, straddle profitable? Be basically, that you know the parity of that straddle would have exceeded this this cost. Well, that happened sixty nine percent of the time, right? So a little bit higher. That means that that maybe maybe at the end of three days it didn't move enough, but given the volatility, you know there there were more instances that that it reached those points. That was sixty nine percent of the time. So now you get a better, a little bit of a better uh, idea how the stock moved historically with how right now the the straddle is being priced. So that's one way to look, you know, that's one way to analyze it and that's one way to look at it. Um, you could also look at it from the options implied volatility. And we could say, well, okay, that's how the stock moved. What about given the options implied volatility? Where's usually these, where does where does this straddle usually priced at? Right, we're how the right now it's six dollars twenty-eight cents, but where do where does the average price value of this option look like three days? So if we looked at historically, based on implied volatility if, for for an at the money straddle three days away. If we use those at the money implied volatilities, plug them into the Black Scholes model. We have that on average, the straddles five dollars fifty nine cents, which is sixty nine cents lower than where it's currently priced. So you could see that the implied volatility is pricing it above that historical average. If we looked at the median, get five twenty two. What about the high low range? As low as 349, as high as 945. So now, just from here alone, we're almost at 930. We analyzed the straddle from a couple perspectives. We didn't get to go deeper. You know, maybe we'll continue this tomorrow. However, what we did do is just on one page, we were able to de determine where our break even is, how much the stock has to move. And quickly, we got stats for ourselves historically, you know, on average, where where would the straddle value be, you know, valued at using historical stock behavior or using historical implied volatility? How frequently did this uh, stock move by enough percentage to make this profitable? And you know where, and we see on the historical range how this straddle is priced. So you could see once you get used to it, and you set it up, you could you could start making these assessments much faster, right? Making make decisions based on more information. Um, so we're we'll, we're right up at nine thirty. I think we're over. So I'm gonna stop there. Yeah, the Soham is very thankful. Rob did ask another question about the straddle. I'll send that to you. He also asked about Tesla's Tesla's earnings aren't today after the close. They're tomorrow. So maybe okay. you can look at the Tesla earnings. He was said maybe if there any anything popping up in the trade idea cards, whatever. But maybe we can look at Tesla earnings tomorrow. It's, they're going to be after the close tomorrow night. Uh, great job, buddy. All right. Thanks, Will. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Stay safe out there. Have a great trading day and hope to see you guys tomorrow. Trade in peace, chameleons. Thanks for the